Today I'm going to show you a complete beginner's guide of the Amazon Fire TV Stick, starting with an unboxing of the device and then the setup process. I'm going to show you some of my favorite tips, tricks, and hidden features allowing you to leave this video as a Fire TV Stick expert. Let's get started. So on the front of the device you have a picture of the Fire TV Stick in the remote and then some of the applications that are on the Fire TV Stick from Netflix, Prime Video, YouTube, Disney+, Plus, ESPN, Spotify, IMDB TV, HBO, Hulu, Apple TV, Sling, Pluto TV, Showtime, and NBC Sports. Simplify your TV experience and of course this is created by Amazon. On the side of the device you have some more information on what's included. Uh, some more cable networks that are also available on the Fire TV Stick. Inside, we get the Amazon Fire TV Stick, the Amazon Voice Remote, two AAA batteries, a power adapter, a USB cable, and an HDMI extender cable. And then what's needed? High-speed internet with Wi-Fi, an HDTV with an HDMI input. And we'll review some of those in a moment. So HDMI is the standard that you'll need in order to use this Fire TV stick. And the HDMI ports are typically on the back of your TV and that's what allows you to watch you know, content when you plug up your devices. We'll take a look at what an HDMI cable and an HDMI port looks like once we get this opened. On the other side here, we've got some more networks and then below some more platforms that are supported by this. So it supports Dolby Atmos sound, which is like the highest quality sound. It sounds great and provides audio all around you. You have Alexa built in. That's going to be a really neat feature to be able to use a voice assistant to allow you to control your TV and uh, get information using Alexa. You've got power and volume controls, quad core, 1080p and Wi-Fi. So these are all standards. Uh, this is based off your internet connection, how fast your internet is. This is the video quality. And on the very back here, it offers some more options here. It's got some examples for Alexa that you can use. Alexa, find dramas. Rewind 20 or rewind 30 seconds. Play Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan. Uh, it's a great Amazon Prime show that I highly recommend. You've got great performance picture in Dolby Atmos tens of thousands of channels, apps, and Alexa skills, latest Alexa voice remote with TV controls, and do more with your TV. Just ask Alexa. So I think Alexa being built into this is probably one of the best features, and we're gonna review all of the features that we can use with Alexa once we get this set up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and peel off this arrow here. You see it has the arrows, and we can peel this off to open up the device. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll peel this back. Just peels off just like that, and we can open up the box. And let's take a look on what's inside. So we can pull it out. And here we have another box where everything is inside of. So we've got the Amazon logo right here, and then we can pull this out. We've got the HDMI extender, that's the first part. So this is what an HDMI cable looks like. This is the port that you plug into the very back of your TV, and we'll take a look at what that looks like on our monitor in a second. But this allows you to further reach your uh, HDMI cable. So you can plug that up just like this. That's what an HDMI port looks like, and we'll examine this further in a moment. So we've got the extender. We've got the Amazon Fire TV remote with several buttons here. We'll look at this in more detail once we get the Fire Stick set up, but it has some instructions on the very back for us to get started. And this looks like uh, it's teaching us how to remove the casing on the back and then put in the AA batteries that are required for this remote to work. So we'll take a look at that in a second. We'll put that to the side and see what else we have in the box here. Some very nice packaging here. So we can pull out the cable. And here we have a USB cable and we can pull this out here. Comes out just like that. So this is a micro USB cable and we'll examine that later on. And then let's see what else we have here. We've got the Fire TV stick right here. It's very tiny and it looks great. Important for best performance, use the included power adapter and USB cable. So um, we'll need to use this cable to power it up successfully. So we can go ahead and open up the Fire TV stick just like that and pull it out. And this is what does all the magic here. So 
we can plug this cable in that we just got right here for power. And then we plug this HDMI cable, which is the port that's on the back of your TV, into the extender. And it goes in just like that. And now we plug this into our TV to activate the Fire TV stick. With Rakuten, you can get cash back at over 3,500 stores. Check it out. As you're browsing, you can shop at your favorite stores and install the Rakuten extension to get cash back when you make purchases. You can use the link in the description to get a $30 bonus today. And this helps out the App Find channel. So check out Rakuten today, shop at your favorite store, and earn cash back instantly. So we can take a look at what else is inside the box here. We've got the Holo Fire TV Stick Guide, and it shows us what's in the box, how to connect the Amazon Fire TV Stick to our TV. So we just plug it up into the wall and then plug it up into the back of the TV, which we'll demo in a second. And some more information here about powering up Alexa, completing the on-screen setup, some Wi-Fi tips, remote pairing, and then getting the most out of our Fire TV Stick. So we'll take a look at all of these cool little features here in a moment once we get the TV set up. But in order to do that, we're gonna have to open up this last component here, which has two very part, important parts. So we've got two AA batteries here, which go on the back of the remote, and then the power adapter for the Fire TV stick. So the power adapter, we just take it and plug in the very end of the USB cable that was provided into the power adapter, and we plug this into the wall. Now we take these AA battery or these AAA batteries. So we'll go ahead and move the TV Fire Stick aside and let's get set up with the remote. You're gonna need to take it out of its packaging here. So we'll go ahead and fill that off and slide it right out. And then we've got some more plastic wrapping on the top here that we can go ahead and pull off on the side. So it just comes off just like that. Now that we've taken off all of the plastic, on the back, we'll put our thumbs and push down in order to remove the casing. So it slides right out just like that, and we can put in the included AAA batteries that were provided to us. So we just slide them in just like this, and slide them in just like that and push down. So this allows power to go to the remote, and then we'll simply slide back on the casing just like this, and now our TV remote has power. So that's gonna help out a lot when we get this connected to a TV and then we try to use the remote to log in successfully. So that's a quick unboxing there. We've got the HDMI extender right here, this device that's connected to the Fire Stick, just like this. This is the extender to allow you to have more space to plug in to your TV. And then we've got the Fire Stick TV right here. And then of course the USB cable and the power adapter that was included. So we'll need to plug this into the wall and then pl plug the power connection right here. You can see it says power. We plug it in right there and that allows this device to be powered up. Um, and then we have the extender which allows us to have further reach from our TV. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks behind in a monitor or TV that we plug this up into and how we get that uh, currently set up. In order to set up your Amazon Fire TV stick, you're going to need access to the back of your television. On the back of your television, there's called an HDMI port. They have multiple ports, usually ranging from two to three or four, depending on the size of your television. You can see that this TV has two HDMI television ports right here. And the Amazon Fire TV stick plugs right into the back of your television. So you find the port and you plug it right in just like this. Now you'll want to take a closer look to the back of the television and it will tell you on the back of the TV what port you're plugging it into. So I can see if I get closer to it right here on the very top it says HDMI 2 and then on the very bottom here it says HDMI 1. You'll want to remember which port you plug it into so you can turn your television to the proper HDMI port channel. If your TV is very small and can't necessarily fit the HDMI port stick right here, it did come with an extender, which allows you to insert the extender into the HDMI port and then plug it up just like this. So this way, when you use the extender, 
this bulky piece may be too big for your television, but with the extender, it fits nicely in, and you're able to plug in the Amazon Fire TV stick without the bulky part being in the way of other HDMI ports. Because if your TV is very, you know, small um, and has multiple HDMI ports, it may be hard to stick in this bulky part into the HDMI part con connection, but the extender allows it to become really small and you can plug this right in without any problems, just like this. So in order to plug in your Amazon Fire TV stick, you will need to have access to the back of your television and you'll need to know which HDMI port that you plug in to so you can turn the TV to the proper channel. So you'll read which ch channel is written on that port and then you'll plug in your HDMI uh, connection right here that's on the Amazon Fire TV stick just like this and this is of course using the connector to make it easier to plug in you don't have to use the connector if you don't want to you can remove the connector from the amazon fire tv stick right here and if it fits perfectly without any connection issues you can just plug it in without the connector now after you get it connected you will need to connect the power source so inside the box there was a usb brick right here and a uh, USB connection on the other end. So this, if we unplug it from the television, you'll see that there is a power connection source right here on the side of the fire stick. And it looks just like this. So you'll want to plug in the power source just like this. And this is what allows the Amazon Fire TV stick to get power. So you'll have to plug in this part into the television the HDMI part right here into the television, and then your power source into the wall so you can have power for your Amazon Fire TV stick. So it goes just like this. And then of course, if we reach below here, I can find the power cable and we just plug it in just like that. Um, so that's how you plug in your Amazon Fire TV stick. You plug it into the wall and then you plug it into the very back of the, the television just like this. And once you have power, you're able to turn your television around and boot up and plug in and power on your Amazon Fire TV stick. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and turn this TV around. We'll have the Amazon Fire TV stick plugged into the wall, and then we'll also have the Amazon Fire TV stick plugged into the very back of the HDMI connection on the back of the TV. And I can see here that this is plugged into HDMI connection two. So I'm going to remember that and then we're going to turn the TV around and get this all set up. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll see you on the other side. Now we've got the television turned around and the Amazon Fire TV stick is plugged into the wall and it's plugged into the very back of the television. So you're going to need your television remote that came with your TV. And this is the Samsung remote that came with the TV right here. And what we're going to do is press the power button in order to turn the television on. So just like this, we press the power button and we have the TV turn on. Samsung Smart TV, and it turns on. And we've got our Amazon Fire TV stick already set up and plugged in into the wall. And we can see here that it's searching for your remote. So we have not turned on the Amazon Fire's TV stick remote, but what I wanna show you before we do that is how to make sure that your television is set up for the proper HDMI channel. If you remember correctly, we plug this into HDMI port two. Now your television may not be on the correct HDMI port channel. So this is why you need your, your TV remote, the remote that came with your television. You plug it in and you turn on the television and then you wanna press what's called the source button. Now your source button is usually in the top and on the top of the remote and you can find it. It may be called input or source, but when you press this source button right here on the television, it pops up with multiple options on your screen. So we can move it to a TV section. You can see there in the top left. Um, we can have HDMI port 2, which is what the Amazon Fire Stick is plugged into. We can do screen mirroring. And then if we had other HDMI ports, it would allow us to see what was on that port channel. But we have plugged the Amazon Fire Stick TV into HDMI 2. So we're going to press the source button right here until we get access to HDMI 
port two, which is right here. So we just press the source button multiple times until it highlights the proper HDMI channel, and then it allows us to see what's on that channel. So if you plug in your Amazon Fire TV stick and you plug it into HDMI port one, then you'll want to switch the source to HDMI port one. And you just press the source button right here multiple times until it goes over to HDMI one. But we're on HDMI 2, so we press the source button until HDMI 2 pops up right here. And now we have access to what's on the Amazon Fire TV stick. We can see that it's offering multiple languages and it wants us to connect the remote. So it's switching between different languages. And the easiest way to do that here is just press the power button on the remote. And you can see this blue dot pops up right here and it automatically connects to the Fire TV stick. And then it says, press the play button to start. But before we go into that, let's take a tour of this remote. We've got the power button in the top right. It looks like we have either the microphone right here, the Amazon Alexa button, a little click wheel. We've got a back button right here, a home button, a menu button, a previous slash rewind button, a play pause button, a fast forward button, a mute button, volume down and volume up, a TV button, and then we've got our options right here for the television um, options when we're watching content, whether we wanna watch content on Prime Video, Netflix, DirecTV, or Peacock, and we can press those buttons. We'll dive into more of these details on the remote later, but you can see that this Fire TV stick, it's constantly making noise, it's buzzing, it's telling us to go ahead and press this middle play and pause button in order to get started. So let's go ahead and do that and see what the setup process is like for the Amazon Fire TV stick. So I'll go ahead and press this play and pause button in the middle in order to get us started and it will take us to the next screen. On the next screen it says choose your language. So we're going to go ahead and set up with English and you can use the trackpad here to move down to a different language. You can see that it moves down just like that when we press the downwards arrow. Um, so you can go ahead and use that trackpad to find whatever language that you want. And it lets us know that the menus and text is in English and the Alexa voice is in English. We can move down to English and Espanol, and then it shows us that the menus and text is in English and Alexa is in English and Espanol. So depending on what language you have, you just use the remote to select which language you want, just like this, and then you press the enter button once you've get it, gotten it set up. So now I've pressed English and now it wants us to set up with the Fire TV app. So this makes it much easier when you use your smartphone to set up with the Fire TV app or you can set up with the remote. If you use the remote, you're gonna have to type in content on the remote and it may be a bit harder to use the on-screen uh, you know, keyboard. So we're gonna go ahead and download the app and see what that setup process is like. So go ahead and grab your smartphone Phone, and then you'll want to go to your smartphone's camera or your QR code reader and scan the QR code that's on the screen. So this is what it looks like when you do it on your iPhone. You open up your camera and then you tap the app and now it opens up to Amazon where you can download the Fire TV app. So you can get the Fire TV app on Google Play. It works on Android and it works on the App Store. So let's go ahead and download this on the App Store. We tap it, it takes us to the App Store and it looks like it gives us a simple remote, a touchpad remote, live television, watch from anywhere, and allows us to easily set up our Amazon Fire TV stick just with, with the app. So we'll go ahead and do this. So we'll press the Get button and then it will authorize using Touch ID and Face ID right here on our phone. So we'll scan the Face ID and it starts to download the app. So this is downloading the Amazon Fire TV app. It enhances the TV experience. I can press the open button and it says Fire TV would like to use Bluetooth. We use Bluetooth to connect and configure your Amazon device. So we'll go ahead and say okay. And now it wants local network permission to so use the Amazon Fire TV stick, you'll need to have local access so it can detect what's on your Wi-Fi network and what's not. So we'll go ahead and say sure, and then this will allow it to communicate. Uh, so we'll go ahead and allow Fire TV stick to access devices on our local network. 
Now turn on notifications so you can get announcements, special offers, recommendations, and more. So this is optional. If you want to receive announcements and special offers, you hit the allow button. If not, you just say not now. We'll go ahead and hit allow for now, and then we'll allow notifications. So now it's looking for devices. And what we'll need to do here is press the set up new device button on the Amazon Fire TV Stick app. So we'll say set up new device and it will open up the Amazon app where you can log in using a security code and uh, log in using your Amazon username and password. So just like this, I have successfully logged into the Amazon Fire TV Stick app and then I can come here and say set up new device. Now it's going to ask what type of device are we setting up. We're setting up a Fire TV streaming device. So we just tap on that and it says searching for Fire TV. So looking for Wi-Fi networks device found and it's going to say, um, you know, it wants to connect it to Wi-Fi for us. So then we can just come in here and choose our proper Wi-Fi network. So I'll go ahead and enter the details to our Wi-Fi network off camera and then we'll return in a moment once this is set up. Network connection successful. So that's good that we see that your Fire TV Stick was added. It's checking for updates on the Fire TV Stick and downloading the latest software. Now that we successfully entered the Wi-Fi network into the phone, to complete your setup, follow the steps on the TV, tap continue to use your phone as a remote. So we can press the continue button at the very bottom here and it will bring up Justin's Fire, Fire TV Stick. It's finishing updates on the Fire TV Stick as we can see. And now I can tap as a remote just by tapping the name and it starts to connect to it. So now in addition to using the physical remote, I can also use my phone as a remote uh, to use the Fire TV stick, just like that. So it wants us to enter the four digit pin and it says that a Fire TV remote app connection request has been created. So we just go ahead and enter that pin on our screen, the same number that's right here on the screen, 8975. We enter that right here on the phone and it successfully allows us to connect the phone to the Fire TV stick and allows us, and allows us to use the phone as a remote. So it's finishing updates. Now we have access to very similar features on the physical remote. And if we compare these two while it finishes the update, you can see that we have Amazon Alexa at the very top. We've got our trackpad here in the, in the center, just like we have a trackpad right here. And then we have our buttons at the very bottom right here, the back button on the remote on the phone, the home button, the menu button, the previous slash rewind, the play pause, and the fast forward. And just like this, it says, welcome, Justin, the Amazon Fire TV stick will be registered to your account. Now I can use the remote on the phone since I downloaded the app and connected it to it right here to make changes right here on the screen. I can tap left and it changes it to the left. You'll see that you'll see right here, it changed the option. I can change account or I can move back to the right just by tapping and you see it changes just like that. So I've got the remote on the phone or I can use the physical remote that came with it. I can switch over to the left by using the trackpad there or switch back over here to the right using the trackpad. So no matter which device you're using, whether you're using your mobile phone or your remote on that's the in the physical world, you can use both to access and change the settings on the Amazon Fire TV stick. So let's go ahead and say, you know, it's welcoming us. This Fire TV stick will be registered to your account. We'll go ahead and hit the continue button. So you'll press the center button right here to move forward. And same if you're using the remote on the phone. The center button is kind of like the enter button. If you want to move forward with an option, you just press the button in the middle and that confirms what's on the screen. So we'll go ahead and press the enter button right here and it will continue. So check in. Your Fire TV stick is designed with kids and parents in mind. So if you have kids and you want to enable parent controls, you can do that. Parent controls allow you to require a pin before playing content from Amazon Video or over the air live TV, launching apps, purchasing digital content, or using Amazon shopping apps to purchase physical products for Amazon. So this is very helpful if you have kids in the house and you don't want them to accidentally purchase movies or apps or games or order things on Amazon. It will always require a pin before they can do those things. And then also most importantly, if they're gonna be watching 
content. It allows you to enter that pin before they can watch you know, a, a movie. Um, that way they're not watching you know, rated R movies or incorrect films for their age. So you can use this to enable parent controls. And just like we did in the previous section, you can use this trackpad right here to move over to the left and move over to the right and pick your choice. So we're gonna go ahead and say no parent controls for now. And um, we'll go ahead and press the enter button right there. And it says preparing your remote for setup. So now we'll move on and see what is the next option. It's, we'll be playing some music during the next step. Please make sure the volume is turned up and then continue. So we'll hit next. With your Fire TV remote pointed at your TV, toggle the volume up and down buttons. So we'll turn the volume up and we'll turn the volume down. And you'll see it uses the TV, the built-in TV options to show you the volume up and the volume down. So with your Fire TV remote pointed at your TV, toggle the volume up and down buttons. The music volume change and come out of the expected audio device. So what this is asking is, did the volume change when we move the volume down? So we turned it all the way down to the zero section and the volume is no longer playing. So it did change properly. If we increase the volume using the Fire TV remote and you see it up on the side here, that means it is properly working because we increased the volume using the Fire TV remote and it increased the volume as it expected. And then the volume is coming out of the TV speakers, which is a good sign. So it looks like the audio is set up properly because we hear music coming out of the TV speakers, which is the expected audio device. And then when we change the volume up and down, it properly goes up and it properly goes down. So it asks, did the volume, did the music volume and did the, view, did the music volume change and come out of the expected audio device? If it did not, you swipe over to no and you try to reconfigure your audio settings. But since it works properly in this case, we'll say yes, because the music did come out of the proper TV speakers and it did change when we use the volume up and down button. So we'll go ahead and select yes, it did and press the center button right here to move on to the next step. So your Fire TV remote is successfully set up and I can press OK to move forward. So just like this, it's optimizing the screen, it's optimizing the settings, it's optimizing everything to get us to our home screen. And it goes black for a minute as it loads here and we'll see what's next as we set up our Fire TV stick. So now it's loading, it has a little loading bar and the loading in the three dots and it's processing. And now is options for a world of kid-friendly content. So we can purchase Amazon Kids Plus for $4.99 after the free trial. It includes a one-month free trial. We're going to go ahead and say no thanks for this. But if you want to have kid-friendly content, Amazon offers this. And what's really nice is since the Fire TV Stick is created by Amazon, it's perfect for Amazon content like Amazon Prime Video, Amazon Kids, Amazon audiobooks, Amazon everything is supported. And of course, one of our favorite features, which we'll demo later, is Amazon Alexa. This little blue dot right here that allows you to use a voice assistant and talk to the Amazon Fire TV stick. So it's offering this promotion right now, a world of kid-friendly content. We'll go ahead and say no thanks just by moving the, the option down you know, in our remote, we can move up and down just like this. We'll go ahead and say no thanks. If you do want to start this free trial, you can. It will attach it to your Amazon account. And then we'll go ahead and say no thanks for now because we do not want to attach this to our Amazon account. So let's go ahead and say no thanks. And now it says choose your streaming services. Everything is free to add. Some will require payment for full access. So we saw on the box that it had several options for streaming services. And you can see here on the screen too, you've got Hulu, Paramount Plus, Sling, and a few others. So let's go ahead and press the get started. If you do not want to add any streaming services, you can move down and say no thanks, but we'll go ahead and get started and see which ones we can add. So. I don't have Showtime, so we won't add that. I don't have Stars. I don't have Sling. I don't have Plex. I do have Disney Plus. So we'll add Disney Plus. I've got Hulu. And all you have to do is just use the trackpad here to maneuver around to all the different ones that you want. If I did want to add Showtime, I can move the trackpad to where the box is covering it. And then I press the center button right here 
and it puts a check mark on it. And that means it's going to install Showtime onto my Fire TV stick. So that's what I did for Disney Plus. I moved the box down to it. If I no longer want Disney Plus, I can hover right back over it and press the center button right here and it will remove the check mark from it and then it will no longer install it. But since I do want Disney Plus installed, we'll go ahead and leave the check box on it just by pressing the center button and it will enable that. Now you'll notice this arrow over here to the center of the screen, which allows us to move over and see what other options are available. So it says, what TV services do you want? Um, and now it says a cable login is required. So we will need a cable subscription in order to use these. So we'll go ahead and say ABC, BET, and TNT. And then we'll go ahead and move over to sports. What sports and fitness apps do we want? So I love NBC Sports. We can do ESPN and NBA. So you've also got options for Fox Sports, NFL, and MLB. And all you have to do, do very much how we did in the previous sections over here, is just hover over the option that you do want and then press the center button in order to check it. So that's how we selected TNT, BET, and ABC. And then this is also over here, ESPN, NBC Sports, and NBA. We just hover over it. If we want NFL, we just tap on it and it hovers over and creates a check mark and we'll install that application. We'll tap on it again to remove that check mark. And then you can see these arrows allow us to move to the next category. If we want to go back to a category and change our mind, we just press the arrow over to the left on the little trackpad and it moves us back over to the previous categories that we've already selected. So we're, we'll move our trackpad over to the furthest section to continue on to see what other apps we can install. These are the sports apps that we have. Now it says, what feature services do you want? So it looks like we've got a few options here. We've got music videos, TikTok. We'll go ahead and select TikTok, music videos, and to be free movies and TV. So now that we selected all the different apps that we want installed on our Fire TV stick, it's going to ask us to press the play and pause button to continue. So in order to do that, all you have to do is find the play and pause button right here in the center of the remote, and then you press it and the following will be added to your home screen. It gives us a review of everything that's going to be installed. So we're going to get Hulu, Disney+, Plus, ABC, BET, TNT, NBC Sports, ESPN, NBA, TikTok, music videos, and Tubi, free movies and TV. And we can see an overview of what will be installed. Now it also has a key of what's going to happen. So we can see right here, if it has the download icon, the arrow pointing down, the app will be downloaded. If it has the shopping icon, we can see right there it's in-app purchasing. If it has this little human icon, guidance is suggested. And then if it has the little location icon, location-based services are required. And then we can see right here on each of the apps, it shows each icon of what is necessary. So for Hulu, the app will be downloaded and then guidance is also suggested. If we can see ESPN, all four of these are required because it has the download button, the shopping icon, the human icon, and the location icon. So app will be downloaded, in-app purchasing is required, and or not required but offered, and then guidance is suggested, and then location-based services in it is enabled. So you can see there, depending on the options that are enabled on the app, it lets you know what's gonna happen when you press this finish button. So you can review which apps are gonna be installed, and then we can come up here and press the finish button in order to install all of these apps. So we go back to our Fire TV Stick remote, and it's already highlighted on finish, and we just press this center button right here in order to move forward. So we press finish, and it takes us to the welcome section of the Fire TV. So welcome to Fire TV, where we can easily navigate with the main menu, decide what to watch with Find, personalize Fire TV with profiles, and customize the apps in your main menu. So this is really cool that it shares that we can create up to six personalized profiles for people. So if we have different people in the house, a whole family, they can have their own recommendations, their own watch lists, their own viewing history, and more. It at least easily allows you to navigate with the main menu, lets you find new content, live television, and access your favorite applications. And then you can decide what to watch with Find if you want to discover a new app or a new TV show or a new movie, new content, you can just press the little find section and do that. And of course, customize the apps in your main menu to make it, you know, access and look what you like, and then quickly access these apps at a glance. 
So that's the Welcome to Fire TV screen. We'll go ahead and it's got one option here that says, got it. We'll use our Fire TV stick remote to move forward. We'll press the center button on got it and we'll see what it, where it takes us next. So now it's asking us who's watching Fire TV. And I've successfully set up my profile so I can enter my profile or I can come down here and use the remote to go to profile settings. Oh, look, it sends us a notification right here. One, on the watch, a new device is named Prime Video. And it also let us know that the app, the TNT app was installed in the lower right. I can come down to profile settings and take a look at what that looks like. So I can press the enter button on profile settings and I can come in here and see all the details of what it looks like for account and profile settings. So it's registered to my Amazon account. I can sync Amazon content. I can visit the Amazon Prime Video app settings. I can go to kids settings. I can enable parent controls. I can go to profiles and manage the profiles associated with my account and I can go to profile sharing. So those are the Amazon account and profile settings. And then in order to get back, all you have to do is just press the back button right here on the remote. So we press the back button once and it takes us back to exactly where we were before, where it asks who is watching Fire TV. Now, one thing I wanna show you before I dive into my account is if we add a profile. So we're just using the TV remote section here to move around just like this and we can go ahead and hover over add profile we've got another notification abc tv is ready to launch and installed properly so let's go ahead and see what it looks like to add a profile to amazon fire tv so it looks like i have a few amazon profiles created and it's really neat that it already knows that some people are in my household hold and i can come here and easily add them just like this so I can import an existing profile. All profiles benefit for personalized recommendations, apps, and preferences. I can come here, I can modify their name, or I can go to profile icon and select an icon. Let's see, we'll come here and select, um, let's go with the, the, there's so many icons, I don't know which one to select. Let's go with the heart one, this one looks cool. So we'll add that. We can see ESPN in the lower right was added successfully. So we selected a profile icon and now we can rename or modify the name of this profile. We'll keep it as Ross and then we'll go ahead and press the add button. So this allows us, hey, Hulu is ready to launch. I can launch that. So we'll add this new profile to our account. And that was just based off what was already in my Amazon account. What if we didn't have anyone in the Amazon account? What if we want to add an, a fresh profile um, and there's no one in our Amazon account? So we can press add profile just like we did before. And now it's gonna say all profiles benefit from personalized recommendations, apps and preferences. Is this a kid profile? We just use our remote to go ahead and select uh, the no or yes. So if it's yes, we enter their birth date. If it's not, we just enter their name. So you can see the options there for a kid. Uh, when we enable kid mode, it does offer additional content like their age. And kid profiles let you set screen time limits, share trusted kid-friendly content, and create a personalized experience for each kid. So we'll go ahead and um, turn kid profile off right now. We'll just enter, um, one name right here. So let's go ahead and enter on the keyboard. So this is what the keyboard looks like on the Amazon Fire TV stick. We'll enter one name right here, J, and then we'll hit next. So just like this, we've set up a new profile. We've entered the name for that profile, and then we scroll down to the add section. And now that the name's selected, we can go back up and pick a profile icon. We can go with the cat there, and then we can press the add button, and it adds a new profile to our device. So now we have three profiles. We've got my profile, we've got Ross, and we've got Jay. Let's take a look at what it looks like to add the kid profile. So we'll scroll up to the very top and we'll press the yes button right there for kid and now we'll enter the kid's name so we'll go over and say we'll use the keyboard and type in the kid name so we'll scroll over just like this and then we'll hit next and now it asks when were they born so we can come over here and select their birthday so 
January 2nd, you just use, oh, BT is ready to launch in the lower right. So we just use the, the keyboard, um, the controls right here on the Fire TV stick to select their birth year. We'll say they were born in 2011. And then we'll say next. And then we'll select a profile icon and then a bunch of kid ones pop up, which is really nice. So um, we'll go ahead and select the dog. And now we have a profile um, that's a kid profile just like this. And we can scroll down just like we do normally and press the add button right here. And it successfully adds that kid profile to the home screen. So now we'll have multiple profiles. Now, depending on who's coming to watch the television, uh, we can come on here and properly select who will be selected, who will be watching. Uh, you can see it's loading and setting this kid profile up, the loading dots in the top or in the bottom right there, the three dots. So it's currently loading. So with the kid profile, it gives us the option to create a child pin. We can see in the bottom right, Disney Plus is ready to launch and installed successfully on this device. So in order to create a child pin, this pin keeps your child in kid-friendly profile so they can't access your grown-up experience. Now, use the remote to select which option you want. If you want to set up this child pin, you just make sure the yellow box right here is selected on next and you press the enter button right here. Or you can move down to not now and press the enter button. But we'll go ahead and set up a child pin and demo that process. So We'll make this pin very easy so we remember it, but of course you want to make this something hard to guess or remember, but it creates this little dowel pad. So we'll just do one, two, three, four for this demo purposes. So it says create a child pin, and now one is at the very top of this remote, two is on the side right here, three is at the bottom, four is right here, MPA Fire TV is currently set up, uh, zero is in the middle. So we'll go ahead and create one, two, three, four. And then of course we can press this button right here to show the pin, which is the fast forward button. And it shows us. So you'll have to remember what this pattern is right here on the screen. The one is at the very top of the remote, the two is at the side, the three is at the bottom, four is on the left, and then zero is in the middle. And now um, we'll go ahead and hide the pin. And it looks like, um, we need five options for pin. So I just entered one, two, three, four, three. So we'll go ahead and enter that pin again. One, two, three, four, three. So that's the pin we created. And now it has options for kid-friendly content. We shared the following content with your kid. Now we can enable kid-friendly prime content and enable kid-friendly content and apps of your own. Um, so apps we currently own it looks like we have tnt tiktok bt all these apps that we've currently on own and installed you can see in the bottom right music videos on fire tvs installed so we'll go ahead and hit done and this will automatically enable kid-friendly content across the prime content and across the apps that we've installed so now it's loading so the kid profile does take a bit more of you know setup process you have to set up a pin you have to enter their birth date and then we'll come in here, it's offering us the world of kid-friendly content again. We'll scroll down and select no thanks. And then it asks, are you sure? It looks like you're eligible for this offer for Amazon Kids, giving your child access to thousands of movies and TV shows. So if you want to enable this, you can go and say, no, I want Amazon Kids Plus. If you do not want to get a month free and this $5 charge per month, you can continue with my own content. So we'll go ahead and do that. So it brings us to the next screen. Now we've successfully set up the kid profile and you can see right here, this is a kid profile because it has the word kid right here. So we've got four profiles successfully set up on the Amazon Fire TV stick. We've got my profile, Justin, and I'm gonna go ahead and edit my profile and add a profile icon so we can, you know, have it all match. I love basketball, so I'll add the basketball profile icon and then I'll save this. And now we have profile icons on every profile right here on the Fire TV stick. So now when I'm logging into it, I can select my profile. When Ross is logging into it, he can select his profile. When Jay is logging into it, they can select their profile. And then of course, the kid profile, you select it. And um, in order to access you know, any of the content, we will need to enter that kid child pin that we created. Um, and it loads up everything right here 
and makes it a safe environment for that kid. So if you have any kids that are using the Fire TV Stick, it's getting things ready for Jess, Amazon Kids, um, and it's a complete different interface than it is if we were to log in to our own uh, account that wasn't a kid count. So you can see SpongeBob SquarePants pops up, a bunch of kid-friendly content pops up immediately, um, PBS Kids, we can use the remote to see what kind of content there is, and um, we can scroll down to movies and TVs, uh, shows that they may like, and it just makes it a very friendly environment for kids to access content. So we can't play any of this content for you, but we can come here to see what this interface looks like. So, you know, we've got the Discover section, the Fantasy section, the Popular Movies and Kids section. And I'm just using the remote to move down. If you want to select a TV show, all you have to do is just scroll down, come over here and press the enter button on that TV section. And now it shows the details section, the synopsis of what's happening in the show. And then you can press the play button to play it or you can favor it. And then of course, in order to go back, you've got your back button right here on the remote. You just press that and it goes back to the previous screen, just like that. So now you may be wondering, okay, I want to switch back to my account. I don't want to be in the kid account. How do we do that? So at the very top of this bar right here, we've got the profile icon. If we move our, our options all the way up to the very top, we can get access to the home menu bar. So we just press keep, we just keep pressing the top. You can see the home section is highlighted. We can move over to the right to the search, or we can move over to the left and select the profile options that we have here. So we cannot access any of the other accounts that are locked because it's kid mode and we don't want our kid logging in to our accounts while they're on their kid profile. So in order to get access, if we want to move our mouse all the way back over to um, Justin, me, I can select my profile and then log in using the pin that we created. Now, in order for us to log back into our account, we will need to enter the child pin. It protects and only shows kid-friendly content on their account in order to get back into the account for adults, and we'll need to enter this pin. So if we remember it properly, it was one, two, three, four, three, and we enter that pin, and it successfully allows us to switch accounts. So now it says, welcome, Justin, and now we're logging in successfully into my account where there's no longer kid-friendly content protections on it. You'll see it'll look a bit different, and I can see full access to catalogs and movies that are not, um, you know, specifically for kids, like we saw earlier with SpongeBob. So it loads this successfully, um, and then we can see and take a tour of this content. So this is what our home screen looks like. It looks like it has an offer for streaming Rio, and then we've got several options on this home screen. We can see that our selection is currently on home. We can use the selection piece right here, the left and right, we can find content and it has different categories right here from the app store, free movies, TV shows and games. Then we can go to our home screen where we have um, looks like a sponsored ad here, recently used apps, Amazon Kids, some options here next for us, next up for you, some free documentaries. Uh, some free romance movies, to be free movies. So they have several options right here that we can check out under the home section. We've got a live television mode where you can see live, you know, content. So view all your live channels. So here we can see the guide of what's live and what's playing right now. They've got live sports on Tubi from you know MLB, Fox Sports, and NFL that you can watch for free. They have featured live apps from YouTube TV, Sling, Direct TV, Stream, ESPN, Fox Sports, Peacock. They've got so many options right here under the live television section. So if you want to watch live television, you can come in here and do that. You've got free options for live TV. It has several options here for the live television section that you can scroll down to as you've got your menu bar right here that allows you to select where you want. And then the last option is My Stuff. So you can come here, you've got your recently used apps and next up for you. Now, if we scroll over some more, we can go to the very top and look at the options in full screen here. The Citadel looks really awesome. It starts playing the intro here for um, this trailer. I can't wait until this Amazon Prime uh, TV show comes out. It looks very great. We can learn more by pressing the button, new episode every week. And it comes out to this week, I believe, Friday. Um, so. 
Oh, this is great. Let's try out Alexa. You can see in the top left, it says, try Alexa, add this to my watch list. So in order to do that, we'll just press the Alexa button, add this to my watch list. And just like that, it adds it to my watch list. So you'll see what you'll need to do in order to use Alexa is hold down this blue button while you're talking. Remove this from my watch list. And just like that, it removes it from my watch list. So I can turn it up and I'm pretty sure I'll get some feedback. We had it on mute so we didn't hear anything. So if I hold down Alexa, you hear the little tone. Add this to my watch list. And then you hear the tone there. So you can see right here, remove from watch list and add from watch list. Watch right there. Remove this from my watch list. And you'll see it change just like that. Add this to my watch list. So that's really neat. I've added this to my watch list. So now season one, what if you lost your memory? What if a spy didn't know that they were a spy? Years ago, the top agents of Citadel, Mason Kane, Richard Madden, and Nina Siege had their minds wiped. So interesting television show here that's coming out soon. Um, and we can watch now within Prime and come down to seasons and episodes. Um, so air date, April 27th. So it looks like it already came out. Um, so we can go to the back button and see what other options are available here. So Fortnite is available to play with your Luna controller. That's a video game. A video game that you can play on your Fire TV. You can scroll over, we can stream Rio. So they've got tons of options in the slideshow here, but let's take a look at the apps that we installed. All we do is just come down to this bar right here and we slide right over to Netflix and it shows some shows that we can watch on Netflix. Prime Video, some shows that we can watch on Prime Video. Freebie, some shows we can watch there. YouTube, some customers also downloaded different apps there. Some news. News by Fire TV, Amazon Music, and then we can come in here and take a look at some other apps. Um, so your the Amazon App Store, some other apps that we can add in right here. So that's very interesting. We can open up the Amazon App Store just like this by pressing on it, and it opens up your apps and channels. And we can see that these are the apps that we have installed, um, and then some more apps here that we can take a look at that are not in the main home screen. So let's go back here and let's take a look at what else Alexa can do. So Alexa, you can control the entire television using Alexa. Um, we can come here and hold down the Alexa button and I can say change profiles. And right here it pops up and allows us to change profiles. Um, so we can come here and scroll over and enter Ross just like this. And Ross loads up and it loads into a different profile. So now all the watch history, we can see we've got an option for streaming Disney plus the Mandalorian right here, sponsored content. Um, but now we're inside of Ross's profile. We can hold down Alexa, what's the news? And just like this, it brings up news, curated news just like this. So we can use Alexa to do almost anything on this television. Um, so it brings us up to some news stations here. We've got some live news playing right now. Um, and we can go back just like this. So this is ABC News. We press the back button and it takes us back to where we were. So let's see what else Alexa can do. We hold down, go to find. And just like this, it opens up the find section. So. If you don't have any Alexa commands in mind that you can think of, all you have to do is just hold down Alexa and it has commands right here at the very bottom that you can access. So we just said go to find a minute ago and it opens up find. We can go to the app store, we can go to free, we can go to movies, we can go to TV shows, we can go to games. Let's see what TV shows are available. We select it, press the enter button um, and it looks like we've got secret agent headquarters right here we can learn more about this option um, and it looks like all of the you know secret service type shows are right here from citadel to kingsman mission impossible tom cruise mission impossible we've got a ton of options here that we can take a look at um, take in um, let's take a look at shazam here superhero mania 
Um, so we can rent this, we can buy it, we can watch the trailer, we can add it to our watch list or more ways to watch. And it allows us to come in here and see what also customer other videos and movies and TV shows customers watched right here. Um, so we can see Ant-Man was a big one, uh, 65, Shazam, Avatar, and more. So it's a really cool way to use your television just by holding down the Alexa button. We can press this button right here in the center and go home immediately. So this always takes us back to home, and then we can pick where we want to go based off the, uh, you know, the home screen. So we've got the home section, we've got live, we've got my stuff, the apps that are right here, and we've got various different apps. Let's dive into settings and see what that looks like. So in settings here, we've got notification settings, we've got account and profile settings, network settings, display and sound, applications, preferences, Alexa, controllers and Bluetooth devices, live TV, equipment control, MyFire TV, accessibility and help. You'll see that there is a badge of 15 right next to notifications. Let's take a look at what notifications we have. And I believe they're all of some of the different apps that we've installed. So some content is provided by Verizon. Get started with great games in the App Store. The App Store also has Netflix. We can wa watch TNT, we can watch ABC, we can watch ESPN, Hulu, all the various different apps that we installed during the login and setup process. We can currently check out, it sends us a notification and lets us know that these apps are currently set up properly. Let's take a look at Disney Plus. That's one of my favorite apps. You'll need to successfully log in to Disney Plus using your credentials, your username and password. And once you successfully logged in, you can then select who's watching. So I can come over here and select Justin. I've got my Iron Man photo as my profile photo. And then I get full access to the Disney Plus content on my Fire TV stick. And this allows me to come in here and watch. You know, earlier we saw a sponsored ad for The Mandalorian. I love this series. I can scroll down to it. I can see which episodes I've watched, which seasons I haven't. It looks like they have a group watch feature. I can scroll over here and check out. But let's scroll down and see, you know, we've got three seasons out. I can scroll down and see that I've watched season three. They can come back and I can rewatch an episode um, and play it on my Fire Stick TV. If we want to see what that looks like, if we go to season two, let's see what the controls look like when you play a, uh, an episode of Disney plus The Mandalorian here. So we'll go ahead and select the play button um, and we'll just press the enter button in order to get started. So it's on chapter one or episode one, chapter nine of The Mandalorian and it does the setup process. The Disney plus original intro comes in and then it starts playing. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip the recap, um, but I wanted to show you this for the control options. So it starts to play um, we can skip further in to see some action. So I can skip, go 10 seconds in just by pressing this button right here on the side. I can go 10 seconds backwards by pressing the left button on the side. But more importantly, if I hit the pause button, we can come here and take a look at um, the other options on the screen. So we can see that this is the title, this is the episode uh, that we're watching, and then the name of the show. And then we've got the time right here, how far we're in. We can adjust that by using the options right here on the remote, the left and right controller to select and further move and scrub along. We can use the down section here to play, go to the next episode or restart. And then we've got settings. So I can tap on the settings here and enable subtitles or change the audio description up here. So we can say English subtitles are turned on and just like that. Um, we've got our different options and so we can go back. So that's what it looks like when you play content using Disney Plus on the Fire TV stick. You can scrub depending on where you want to go between the episode. You can scroll down, you can restart it, you can play it, you can go to the next episode and you can enter uh, you know, the settings to access different modes of you know, subtitles and audio versions. So we'll go ahead and hit the back button to go um, back to our menu option here, and this has been a preview here of Disney Plus on the Fire TV stick and um, allowing us to check out the different episodes here. So it's really cool. They've got tons of apps on the Fire Stick, so Disney Plus is not the only one. We can go back to the home section and see what other apps they have. So we just press the home button and that takes us right back to the home screen. 
So another favorite is Prime Video. Prime Video is also created by Amazon, so I can tap on this and it automatically logs me in because I'm logged into my Amazon account and I have Amazon Prime, a subscription to the Prime Video service. So here I can come, um, I do need to download it, it looks like. So let's go ahead and download. We did not download that during the setup process. So I'll press the OK button there. It starts to download Amazon Prime Video and it loads it successfully here. So it's downloading, it's got the three dots, it's loading, and now you can watch TV shows and movies, including award-winning Amazon exclusives. You can see that other people also use Disney+, Plus, Prime, Internet, Hulu, Netflix, Freebie. Um, and while this downloads, we can take a look at and see what else we have, because this is taking quite a bit. Um, so we'll hit the back button and go immediately to our home screen. So we can see here, that we've also got, let's take a look at Freebie and see what shows are on this platform. So we just press the enter button on the Freebie section and we have to download this too. So we'll go ahead and download that um, and see what else we have. Let's take a look and go back and see if the Prime Video has successfully been installed. We'll tap on that and it will load up and it has been successfully installed. So Prime Video allows us to watch Amazon Prime content. You need a subscription for this on your Amazon account, and it asks who's watching Prime Video, and I'm watching it. So I'll go ahead and select me, and we can take a look at what it looks like to check out videos on Amazon Prime. So we can come here, one of my favorite series is called Upload on Amazon Prime. So I can use the remote to go over to Find, and let's search for upload. Um, so we'll come in here and we'll type in upload. And we'll scroll down, we'll find the P and then we'll find the L. And then here it pops up, Amazon original upload. And we can tap on it just like that. So now we can see this came out in 2020. Um, from the Emmy winning Greg Daniels, The Office Parks and Rec comes a hilarious new science fiction comedy. In the future, people can upload their consciousness to a luxurious. So this is an interesting science fiction show that I love on Amazon. It's an original. Um, I can come here, I can watch episode one. Um, it's included with Prime. Let's take a look at what it looks like when we do play an episode on Prime, because the interface may be a little bit different than Disney+. Plus but they're all very familiar and very similar. So I can hit the play button, it starts to load this episode in, Amazon Original, and now I can do the same stuff we did on, on, um, on Disney Plus. So I can pause it really quick, I can play it, and then when I'm paused, the options at the bottom pop up, so it allows us to use the menu option right here, this button right here, to see what options we have. Um, so I can say, see what's next up. I can watch from beginning. I can go to subtitles. You can see all the options are right here on the right section right here from audio. Now, Amazon Prime also has a really cool feature called X-Ray, which shows you what's on the screen. So who is currently acting in that episode and uh, what they are, uh, you know, their real name, what they're known for. So I can see Andy is right here. Um, Nora, she's known for Upload, Pitch Perfect 3, Chicago Fire. I can scroll over to Amy, she's a lady on the subway, she's known for All Rise, High School Musical, and more. So X-Ray is a really cool feature um, where it shows what people are currently on the screen, and I can of course go to the cast, see everyone that's currently in this episode and on the cast of Upload, and then I can go down to music and see what was played. Um, so this is a really cool feature that I love um, that's built into Amazon Prime Video. It's called uh, X-Ray. So in order to get to that, you just pause the episode and it shows you who's on the screen here. You can use the remote to access all of the details there. So we just pause and then um, we press up to get access to, uh, uh, to, get access to X-Ray. So that's a cool feature. We can, of course, scrub. Uh, just by pressing the right button right here and that fast forwards 10 seconds. I can hold to fast forward more than 10 seconds just like this. So you can see it's fast forwarding on the lower left. And then I can of course rewind and go the other way just by holding 
and fast forwarding or now rewinding in this case to go back. So just like that, we're rewinding and that's the interface for the prime video movies. So we can press the home button to go home and see what else we have access to just like this. So it creates a really cool interface. They're all different depending whether you're using Disney Plus or Prime Video, but what remains the same is the home interface. Anytime you press this home button, it always goes back to this screen where you can access various different apps. And uh, now that we have Prime Video installed, we also downloaded Freevee. So we can take a look at what is in Freevee just by selecting it and pressing the enter button, which is the circle right here. So this allows us to check out the brand new app that we just installed. It loads up, we've got a black screen as it loads, um, and then we'll see what the app has to offer in terms of content and what the play button looks like. So it has the loading screen for Freevee. It's currently loading. And we can currently just wait a minute to see, you know, how, um, what options we have. So it has a new feature. We can save titles to my list for fun. Just press and hold on a title to see more options. So we can press the OK button on that. So it looks like they have a few uh, new you know, options here. So if we want to save uh, this option right here for French, we can press and hold on it and then some options come up and I can play it or I can add to my list. We'll go ahead and add to my list and it adds that to my list just like that. And I can go back and see what other options are available. I can continue watching upload. I can watch live popular channels. I can see new movies this month. And let's go ahead and check out Pitch Perfect. We can just select it, and then I can watch a completely free movie uh, right here on Freebie. So it loads, and it makes it really simple to watch free content. You just download the app, and you see what options are available in the library, and you can see that this is currently loading Pitch Perfect 2 on our screen. So then it starts to play. It's got an ad, um, so this ad will continue to play and then our free content will start to play. Okay, so it's starting to play this movie and um, the big thing that we want to take a look at is what the interface looks like. So Pitch Perfect 2, we can rewind and fast forward using the left and right on the remote. We just fast forward, we hold down to scrub, um, and we press the other way to rewind. So very similar to using Disney Plus or Amazon Prime. You press the right side to fast forward, you hold it down to fast forward fast, or you press it once to fast forward 10 seconds. You press the left side to rewind 10 seconds, you hold it down to rewind more than 10 seconds. And you've got various different options here on the screen that we can come in and check out. Um, so if we move our selection pad over, we've got um, subtitles, we've got add to my list, and then we've got this button right here, which allows us to restart the whole movie itself. So now that we can uh, check out the options here for the video screen, we'll go back to the main screen and see what other options are available. So that's what it looks like when you load Pitch Perfect 2 or any movie. You have various different controls. You can see how they differ from Disney Plus or Prime Video, but they're very similar when watching content. So we can come here and see um, this has been freebie. It allows us to watch popular content, allows us to watch free movies, and you can load it up. You just download the app and you select which movie you want to watch and hit play. And it makes it really easy to get started. So let's go ahead and hit this home button um, and take a look at what else we have. So on the remote, there are some app buttons that we have not pressed yet. So if we want to access Prime Video without having to select the app, we just press this button right here. We press it once and it opens up Prime Video instantly. Really cool. You don't have to filter through the home screen to find it. If you want to open up Netflix instantly, you just press the Netflix button on the remote and it opens up Netflix instantly. You don't have to go to the home screen and you don't have to filter through the apps to find it and it makes it really easy to get started. So we will need to download Netflix, so we'll go ahead and do that. In order to get started, the download's queued and then it's downloaded. You've got an app. There are several ways to open the app from the apps section in the main menu, from holding the home option and seeing all of your apps, and then with voice remote. So that's cool. We can hold down the home key right here and then all of our apps will pop up just like this. So we can scroll over to apps 
and it will take a look at all the apps that are currently on our device and we can load them. Another cool way of opening up an app is using Amazon Alexa. So if we want to open up Prime Video, we can say we can hold down the blue button right here and say open Prime Video. So let's try that out. Open Prime Video. And just like that, Prime Video is open. So Alexa is one of the best features of the Amazon Fire TV Stick. It makes it really fun to be able to come in here and open up various different applications. You can hold it down and say, open Netflix. And just like this, it opens Netflix successfully. So one thing you'll notice when using Alexa is that a little blue bar pops up at the very bottom. So when we hold down Alexa, this blue bar pops up. That lets you know that Alexa is currently listening to you. And then when you let go, you also see the blue button on the remote. So this allows you to know that the microphone right here is currently listening to you too. And then when you let go, it's no longer listening to you and it's processing that information. So the microphone blue dot pops up when it's listening to you and at the very bottom, the blue dot pops up when it's listening to you. You just hold down, open Prime Video. You give it a command and just like that, it executes that command and it makes it really easy. We can tell it to go back to Netflix. Open Netflix. And just like this, it opens Netflix. So this is really cool that we have these options right here on the home, uh, on the remote itself, Prime Video and Netflix, and then we use voice control to access it too. Let's take a look if we go home and see what other options we have on the remote. So if we're using the volume up, we can go up or down on the volume just like that. They also have a mute button right here. If we press this button, it will instantly mute. You'll see the mute icon pop up right there. It'll instantly mute the TV. And then of course you can press it again to unmute. And then we've got this live television button right here that we can press to go live TV just with one click. And this will open up the live section and it opens up the guide here. Right now ABC News Live is currently playing and we've got various different TV shows and different live content that we can open up. So we can scroll through the guide here and see what else we have. So this is an example of what it's looked like to add live content on your TV. You just press the live television remote button right here in the bottom right, this television icon right there, and it opens up live television and you can access the guide and switch to different channels um, and watch as much content as you want on your live television section. You can go over to today all day section and see what's on the Today Show, just like this. Um, so it makes it really cool to come in here and watch live content and stay up to date. And the best part about it is it's all free. Um, so we can see what that looks like. And anytime we're done and we want to go back to home, we just press this home button right here on our screen and it takes us back to our home screen. So this has been a complete beginner's guide to the Amazon Fire TV Stick, where we've demoed features from using Alexa to getting our account set up using the Fire TV Stick app on our phone, demoing what it looks like to use the interface on Disney Plus, Free, Freebie, and Prime Video, what it looks like to check out the live television section, what it looks like to check out different sections on the kids profiles and to create multiple accounts. We've gone over multiple features allowing you to become an expert of the Fire TV Stick. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Consider giving us a super thanks that helps out the channel. If you enjoyed this video, comment below. Let us know what you liked, what your favorite feature of the Amazon Fire TV Stick is. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to figure out when we release our next technology video. We love making these technology videos for you and these complete beginner guides to show you how to become an expert of every topic. So we can't wait to produce the next video for you. Make sure you're subscribed, comment below what your favorite feature is, and if you're feeling great and love this video so much, consider giving us a super thanks to help out the AppFind channel and smash that like button. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.